Getting the right amount of water to the right parts of your garden can mean the difference between success or failure. And that's where irrigation comes in. But a lot of people find it daunting. Personally, I love it. It's like big kids Lego. So today, it's Irrigation 101. And I'm gonna show you just how easy installing irrigation is. The first thing to do is determine the flow rate of the water supply. This can be done by filling a 10 litre bucket from a tap nearest to where you are connecting your irrigation system. Turn the tap on full and time how long it takes to fill. It took 16 seconds to fill the 10 litre bucket. Based on this, we can work out the flow rate is 37.5 litres per minute. If we multiply that by 60, we get a flow rate of 2,250 litres per hour. Now I have that information, I can apply it across the garden to different watering zones and ensure that each zone falls within the property supply flow rate. The veggie garden is one of my watering zones and I'm using drip line irrigation, which has four litre per hour drippers spaced every 20 centimetres along the pipe. My veggie beds are three metres long, which means there'll be 15 drippers per run of pipe. I'm gonna space the drip line pipe 30 centimetres apart, which is good for uniform wetting on sandy soil, which means along here, there'll be five runs of pipe. 15 drippers per pipe times five runs of pipe is 75 drippers times four litres per hour flow rate. That's 300 litres of water per hour per bed. There are five beds, which means that's 1,500 litres per hour for the whole veggie garden. Well, within my 2,250 litre per hour water supply. Simple. Running underground is a 20 millimetre PVC supply pipe that provides water to each bed via an isolation valve that will be connected to a header line that I'll put together now. It's very simple. Just mark out the 30 centimetre lengths and cut to size. Sweet. Then connect the runs of drip line. At the end of each line, I'm installing another inline valve that can be used to flush the pipes occasionally. These barb fittings are specifically designed for this drip line and hold tight under pressure without the need for clamps. Job done. Fruit and nut trees are another watering zone in my garden and this macadamia will certainly need a regular drink. I'll also put it on drip irrigation, but I'll install it in a slightly different way. To ensure even watering of the root zone, I like to create a ring of drip line around the base of the tree. There's a 19 millimetre polypipe supply line in place to connect to using an elbow connector. These fittings need a clamp to keep them securely fixed. Capping the other end provides a flush point and also makes it easy to extend the drip line ring as the tree grows. I've got a growing number of pots on my deck and having them on irrigation is super handy, especially when you go away. Once again, the pots are on their own watering zone because they need small amounts of water regularly. A 19 millimetre polypipe supply line runs under the deck and pops up for easy access at a couple of spots where I have groupings of pots. From that, I run microtubing and that connects to the drippers. These are pressure compensating drippers, which means that they will apply their nominal volume regardless of where they are on the line. Each of my irrigation zones are controlled by an automatic timer for convenience and accuracy. Small, simple systems can be run directly off a tap. When using drip irrigation, it's also a good idea to include a filter to prevent clogging. Well, there's some easy tips for successful irrigation at your place. Know your property's water supply flow rate and group your plants together based on their common water needs. 
otherwise known as hydrozoning. I've also shown you some different techniques of installing irrigation for different types of plants. With that done, I can focus on other important jobs in the garden, like kicking back and enjoying this beautiful space.